we had some pretty big news over the past uh, two days, few days, and uh, I wanted to gather my thoughts before I just jumped out on some ledge and uh, you know said some stuff. You know, people tend to hold my feet to the fire, and you know, I'm not really ranty guy like like I I do my um my angered creative discussions or whatever but I'm not really ranty guy I'm not really the the cry in the rain and go why guy I like to sit down figure it out and go why guy so I know I know people really want me to talk my shit about Lael or whatever and I will but I wanted to offer perspective on why Lael got signed not just me giving you my angered opinion on Lael being signed, so we'll talk about that. And we got Zeke news, but we know about the Zeke news or whatever. So, Lael first. Lael Collins, five years, fifty million, ten million dollars a year, right? Um, first of all, my initial stance was, man, Lael Collins is having some bad years. I'm looking for offensive line help. I understand offensive line is hard to find, but we've uh, been drafting pretty solidly at offensive line. And my, you know, my big thought was Operation 2020 Yo Line, which was Tyron Connor McGovern, Travis Frederick, Zach Martin, and Connor Williams at the right tackle, saving us $9 million from the Leo Collins stranglehold, moving on from him, and just moving forward with those five guys. Now, I'm not saying that's not going to be a thing. It's just that's not going to be a thing in 2020. I think Operation 2020 O-Line will be different from 2019 O-Line. It it could be the same, but I think there's a lot of things that go into this opposed to just, hey, we're just signing Leo Collins. I think, if anything, this was insurance. I think this was the front office saying, I don't want to be stuck in a situation Um, you know, putting my livelihood in the hands of Cameron Fleming. Now, there are some of y'all that like Cam Fleming, but y'all think I hate Leo Collins? I really hate Cam Fleming. Not as much as I hate Suofilo, but like Cam is in the middle. Like Suofilo down here, Leo here, Cam in the middle. Everybody's down there, though. That's where my hate kind of comes from. So we're in a situation where Tyron, he's declining, but people, they're kind of pretending like Tyron is the you know, trash now, but that's not the case. Tyron's still top five. He's just not a demigod anymore. So what I think is going on is we're in a situation where if Tyron pulls an Andrew Luck, if Tyron is tired of saying, ouch, we're not scrambling for a left tackle, if that makes sense. Um, Travis is signed till 2023. Connor, I believe, is signed till 2022. And now Lael, Zach Martin, and Tyron Smith are signed to 2024. So we got guys, which is good. But we're in a situation where, like I said, if if Tyron just says, man, look, I don't want to do this no more. We're not just going to lose a season over that. And I know some fans have, uh, they some Cowboy fans have ha- have asked me, yo, Vach, do we just um, put Lael Collins at left tackle? Hell no, nah, because I barely want his ass at right tackle. I think if anything were to happen to um Tyron Smith I think Connor Williams is going to be your left tackle of the future he's gotten some work in at right tackle but that's a typical thing to get right tackle work prior to getting your full-blown left tackle work now Connor is a guard right now he's going to be the guard for the for the 2019 season I think that if anything happens to Tyron this year I think Cam Fleming would be that guy unfortunately but in terms of a big move in terms of a moving forward move and you know like a my back hurt and i can't play 16 games kind of move or ouch andrew luck type of stuff i can't play no more type move i think we're definitely looking for a guy like connor williams over a guy uh like uh cameron fleming because we got plenty interior guys so Philo unfortunately is there but then there's connor mcgovern when he gets healthy there's joe looney in there um we we got those guys but i just think the tackle position is a little more sticky and by signing leo collins he's not the best right tackle in the world trust me i know but if i sit down and i think rationally and put my thinking cap on if i if i rank them like where where can i put leo collins in you know just amongst the other right tackles in the league you know i'm not gonna go to pff or no crazy you know tomfoolery like that but leo collins will probably be like in the middle somewhere and that's like doug free does you know and we had the best offensive line in the league with doug free so hey if everybody step up but our weakness got to be leo collins at right tackle then i can deal with that 
the interesting thing about Leo Collins making $10 million a year now is that we know that the right tackle price is going to keep going up, but Leo Collins is going to be making 10 years over the next uh, five or so. Well, it's an extension, so six or so. So that's kind of dope. I kind of like it in that way that, you know, one day right tackle money is going to be like 15, 16, 17 million dollars and we'll have Leo for 10. Something that gives me a little bit of positivity about this is that we know Leo's been good before. Like I've seen Leo be good. Out of his four years, he's been good twice. You know what I mean? It just kind of, you know what I mean? Like his 2015 season was pretty good. His 2017 season was spectacular. 16 and 18, we kind of got to talk about it a little bit. Uh, 16, he got his job taken uh, from Ron Leary or whatever. But um, 2018, you know, uh, it's it's documented how terrible I think Leo Collins was in 2018. But uh, in 2017, he went against Ryan Kerrigan, JPP, Von Miller, Khalil Mack, Justin Houston, Joey Bosa. And not only did he go up against those guys, but he beat the hell out of them. And I was proud to be a Leo Collins fan. Um, I don't know what's happened between then and there. A lot of people... Can I just clear this up real fast, right? A lot of people are going to ask me, yo, Vach, does Mark Colombo make a difference? You can go to my Cowboy XP video where I was talking to Joe Looney, the live stream on my channel, and I asked him, I say, Joe Looney, what's the difference between Mark Colombo and Paul Alexander? What's the difference in coaching? And if you listen to, to what Joe said and read between the lines and such, Joe basically said nothing. <laughs> he basically said, we just didn't like Paul but we like Mark. I don't think there's this big scheme difference because, look, I break down film every single week for y'all. We still run inside zone the same way. We still fight for hands inside. You know, sometimes the weak hand will fall to, like, a, you know, kidney bicep placement or whatever. Like, all the hand, feet, scheme stuff, it's the same. I think Paul Alexander was a scapegoat. Hey, we playing bad. Let's blame it on this coach. We don't like to get him up out the paint. That's what I think. I think we had a bad year at offensive line, man. There's no, there's no, we talking pro bowlers, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We we talking about pro bowlers on this offensive line. Leo's pretty cool. But, but, but pro bowlers, a coaching change ain't just going to make pro bowlers stop being great. Okay. So I don't want to look for the whole, can Mark Colombo make guys better excuse? I'm not getting into that, but, um, kind of got i kind of got pissed off my <laughs> my bad job but um leo collins going into uh 2019 season one thing that he could do to to make me feel better about him is just don't miss with your hands if leo collins has a little bit of patience he just doesn't miss with his hands i've done film sessions breaking all that stuff down uh if he if he doesn't miss with his hands leo collins is, is is fantastic and i would love to have him at my right tackle but if he's gonna miss with his hands he can go smooth off the damn bridge that's my thoughts on that my cable bill was way too high. I reached out to AffordableSticks.com. They sent me a fire stick, plugged that thing into the HDMI. Now I get unlimited shows, movies, and live TV. I'm a huge sports fan, so I love League Pass, Sunday Ticket, and I get the pay-per-view fights for free. That's something for the whole family. You can buy a fire stick for every TV in the house and still spend less money than you would on cable. That's AffordableSticks.com. There's a link in my description. You should go click it. Cut the cord, man. And in terms of Zeke, the reason why I got a headache because the damn Tony Pollard fantasy football value was plummeted. But real talk, though, I kind of did want to go through this experiment to see what life without Zeke was going to be like. Um, I think we should have just rolled the dice on like that week six type of deal, right? We go through those first few easy games. Let me click the button here. We go through these first easy games, the Giants, Redskins, and Dolphins, and then we play two hard games, the, the Saints and the Packers. I wanted to play those games with Zeke, and according to what the record was going to be after those games, it's kind of what I wanted to pay Zeke. If we would have been 5-0 and after those five games, then we have all the answers we need about the Cowboy defense, about the Cowboy quarterback. If we would have gone like 0-3 before we played the Saints, then we need to hurry up and get Zeke gas up in here before we play the Saints. But we ain't got to worry about that because Zeke got his monies. Uh, he got his bread. People are going to ask me who, who, who won the exchange. Uh, I don't necessarily, you know, I don't necessarily think this was a one side one, uh, one side one, one side was victorious type of deal. I don't think that's uh, that's this this kind of deal. I think Zeke is the best running back in the league, and he had to get paid accordingly. Um, I don't like how Zeke went about it. It is what it is, but uh, he's here now. So now all we got to do now is. Um Hey, focus on Zeke being here. Um, people, people, you know, people are are concerned about how many carries Zeke 
Zeke should get going into um going into the the Giants game or whatever because he didn't get preseason snaps. Well, Zeke ass ain't never got preseason snaps, so it's not like uh, it's not like any anything's gonna be different here. Just you know, put him on the ground and let him fly, and uh, we finally get to see what your boy Kellen Moore uh, gets to you know what he what he brings to the to the table in terms of his new play calling and creativity, and that's that's the one thing I'm really I don't want to say worried about, but um. You know, Zeke missing time. I'm sure Zeke will be able to be a top tier runner when he gets back, but I just want him to have that, you know, that symbiosis with the offense to where, you know, Tony's been there the whole time. Tony gets the 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 play calls, the feel of what Kellen could call, could play. Um, you know, routes that he probably is gonna get used to run. I want Zeke to to have that kind of time in. Um but hey, we gotta go through games. We just running with Zeke and not throwing the Zeke because we throwing the Tony because Tony understands, you know, the passing game from the running back position. And cool, Zeke can get used to it later, and we'll be throwing the Zeke by week seven or something like that. I hope because in one of my fans' football leagues, I got Zeke and Alvin Kamara, which all goofy ass. Moving forward, though, uh, we got the Giants this week. Um, I'm trying to get this last little bit of me chilling and being a civilian and me not working so hard because once football season gets started, I'll be grinding this thing all the way till February. And then, you know, draft comes around. So I really won't get no breaks. So uh, I won't get any breaks. So uh, how this channel is going to go uh, for the rest of the season is we're going to play a game on Sunday. I'm going to do the most best Cowboys fantastical uh, post game show is going to be live on the channel and we're going to do the morning after show um, that that Monday morning, whenever the hell I wake up or whatever. But um, those shows are. Yes, we're going to have the phones live live on those shows, too. So absolutely call in and uh, it's, it's, it's going to be a cowboy party because I expect a lot of cowboy W's. You're going to get instant analysis and instant thoughts and all that. I'm going um, I'm to I'm get my cowboy roundtable cohorts to call into the show. Um, you know, you know, Fuss, Koi, Law, all those guys to, um, you know, kind of give me their thoughts. So it's going to be an extravaganza. Plus, y'all get like three film sessions a week from me um, when regular season football comes around. So we got plenty of stuff to learn, plenty of football to break down. But with that being said, I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Um, I like doing these blogs too, so y'all may get y'all may get some of these. So you know, you know, stay stay tuned in all that stuff. But uh, y'all hold it down for the Doski Woski, the Peaski Weeski does not cost you ninety million or damn 50 over five years it's 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 free there's a basket of peace we just get the door grab you by six of them on your way out i got a bunch in the closet here peace y'all after canceling my cable i saved twenty four hundred dollars this year by switching to beast tv through channels for cheap.com some people pay 200 plus dollars a month i paid 120 a year or you can go 15 a month if that's what's convenient for you you get 2500 hd channels a thousand of those are in english and there are plenty of other international channels tv guide and we get all the sports one of my favorite things is multi-screen feature so if i don't know what i want to watch i can tune into four different channels at one time that you can watch on four different devices and it's available on fire sticks smart tvs tablets and if you're on the go you can watch tv on your phone hit the link in my description or go to channels for cheap where you can get a free seven day trial. That's a whole week for you to just sit down and play with it and see what you like about it. Then come back and make a purchase. If you have any questions, go to channelsforcheap.com, hit this little button right here and they'll respond to you immediately. That is channels number four cheap.com. The link is in the description. I highly recommend it. Let's do it. The YouTube Illuminati is taking money away from your favorite content creators and people often ask the best way to support the channel directly. I tell them that subscribing to my Patreon. Just $1 a month would increase production and the frequency of uploads. Basically, that means more content for you. For less than a bag of almond M&Ms, you can support the channel, call dibs on requests for future videos, and you can have access to Patreon exclusive material like my throwback film sessions. That's patreon.com slash Lombardi. I appreciate the support. Doski Woski. Salute.